Hey guys, welcome to episode 178 of The Cat Lady. My name is Andrea, also known as The Cat Lady. Uh, this is a knit tube, fiber tube channel that uh, revolves around anything yarn related, knitting, spinning, crochet, and all sorts of other crafts. So I, like I said, I am The Cat Lady, which also stands for Craft All The Things, C-A-T-T, -T, right there. <laughs> And uh, I am in Michigan with my husband, two kids, and a cat. And yeah, thank you for joining me. If you are new, thank you so much for checking me out. I hope you like what you see. Please like, subscribe, share, all that stuff. Love to hear your comments on anything I talk about. Uh, all the links of things I talk about, I try to put down below. So, but if you have any questions, just comment. You can find me on Instagram as the cat lady. I also have a Facebook group. Just search for the cat lady two T's. If you just do a Google search for the cat lady with two T's, uh, most of everything comes up. Uh, I do have a hand dyed yarn shop that is empty right now, so I need to work on at least putting up the dye to order stuff. So I have a whole line of solid colors that are dye to order, so I need to get those back up. I'm hoping to get back into dyeing again, but it's just been so busy. Uh, I also have a Discord channel that we chat on pretty regularly, so if you want to come chat, then go ahead and check out the link below for the Discord channel. It is a app slash website that you can uh, you need an account for, but you can join that. Also, if you want to donate to the podcast, I have a coffee account and that is also linked down below. I'm hoping in the new year, unless uh, I'd love to hear your opinions, but I feel like to kick off the new year, we make a, we do a cat lady make along. Hopefully by then I will have more yarn up in, available in the shop and anybody who has Cat Lady yarn, it'll be like using my yarn and using my patterns. I have two patterns currently. I have a shawl and a pair of fingerless mitts that are available. You can purchase those on the website as well or on Ravelry. Uh, I am on Ravelry. All my projects are usually updated on Ravelry, but I don't use like the groups or anything anymore. So that is my spiel. I think that is all. Oh, my website is thecatlady.com. Or the hand dyed yard. Again, everything is down below. It is Tuesday, September 20th. I cannot believe I was just sitting here saying it's the first day of school and now September is almost over and it's the first day of fall tomorrow, I think. And I am just like kind of having a freak out, like, because I want, I really want to get back to dying. And I thought I would be doing that by now, but like things are just so busy and I have so many other things going on and I. It will just, it's just, it's gonna, it's gonna work out the way it's gonna work out. I'm not gonna try to stress about it too much, but it is what it is. So on to the uh, crafting stuff. So uh, if you are new, I will say I do record clips throughout the week and then splice them together and post on Friday. So I will show you what I've been up to the last couple days. And then I, I will talk about the weekend at the end because at the end of this clip. Um, yeah, my episodes are not really super structured, so, and I did some kind of pulling and people seem to like it kind of casual, which I do too. So I did get a new microphone, so hopefully this one's better. This one plugs right into my phone. The other one had like a weird adapter and stuff, and it's a little more solid, so, and it was a little more money. It wasn't super expensive, but it was more than $5. <laughs> so I think this one's going to be better. Anyways, I finished my second crocheted knocker. Which one's the one I just finished? This one. Not that it matters, but. So I now have two, and I am not making any more, unfortunately. The hook and this yarn combo just isn't, didn't work. It was just like every time I would work on it, it would hurt my hand. So. so unless I find another hook or another yarn to try, it just wasn't working out for me. So I don't know. I still do want to make more. They're actually easy travel projects, and so I don't know. Maybe I need to try my Amore hook. It is a little smaller, so I worry about my gauge. But uh, maybe I should try it just to see if it feels any different. So this is Patton's Grace in the champagne color. One, one little, I don't know if it was 50, they, they look like 50 gram. One 50 gram thing make, mole makes two C sized. I haven't measured these officially, so I'm not going to stuff them. I'm just going to send them to the organization as is because so they can stuff them exactly how they want and, you know, let the, let the people that are experienced with it do that. So. Uh, if you Google knitted knockers, again, I'll put the link below. You can get the knitting. There's knitting patterns and there's a crochet pattern. I just thought I could try the knitting pattern. That could be something I could try too. I just, I just like the, for something like this, I like the crochet. So, but maybe I'll try the knitting. Uh, double points. I haven't done double pointed knitting 
in quite a while. So those are done. Uh, my sweater, I worked on that a little more. If you follow me on Instagram and Facebook, I put on a poll to determine what to do with my sweater. And as my polls tend to go, it was completely not helpful. So here's where I'm at with the sweater. Oh, I did, I cast on the sleeve. I'm not done with the sleeve. So I'm working on my second sleeve right now. And I did about, uh, about a good, a good solid inch or so of the body. So the body is probably like right almost uh, under bust. So like a couple more inches, I need to determine what I'm doing. So that's why I stopped and put on the sleeve, which I'm glad because I hate doing sleeves. And my sleeve looks good. Actually, the sleeve looks really good under there. So that's good. So we're doing the sleeve. Uh, this is the Real Easy Raglan by somebody, <laughs> link below, free pattern on Ravelry. I am making the extra small because I wanted it fitted. I did adapt the pattern a little bit. I stopped the increases, or I did the, I did the pattern where, until it told it. After the Raglan increases, it wanted you to do more stuff. I did not. I split for the sleeves and started at that point because it seemed weird and I didn't like the way it was going to go. So. I made it like a traditional sweater that I always have made. I never have ever knit past the raglan. So that seemed really strange to me and I tried it on and everything, it's fit. It's so nice, it fits very nice. It's a nice fitted top. It's like a t-shirt. But at the bottom, I'm, I was either deciding to just go straight stockinette with a little nice ribbed edge or a full like two by two rib around the whole thing to make it more of like a, just more unique, I guess, and more fitted. That was my original plan. And then I started rethinking, I really like the way the stockinette looks. Maybe I should just go all stockinette. It'd be really cute that way too. So now I'm at a loss of where I'm going. So I did a poll and I did the poll on Instagram, but my Instagram stories always, or posts always go over to Facebook as well. And I had people comment on the Facebook post and then I had people do the poll on Instagram. I got, nine votes for ribbing on Instagram for all ribbing, 10 votes for stockinette on Instagram. But then I got three votes for ribbing on Facebook and two votes for stockinette on Facebook, which equals 12 votes for ribbing, 12 votes for stockinette. So I don't know what to do. I might just start with the ribbing and see if I like it. Is it, I don't know because it's it gonna look funny in the back because it's like the front it's like a clear like there's a clear line of where it's gonna be under bust and it's gonna be ribbing the back is gonna be it's all flat so is it gonna look funny that it's gonna be like half and half and then I feel like just ribbing on the front is gonna be weird so that doesn't seem right either my husband says he'd prefer it all stuck in it I don't know, this is where I'm at. So I will work on the sleeve <laughs> and get to the point where I need to make my decision and then I'll have to just make the call. So I'm using the Cat Lady yarn. So this is my hand dyed yarn. This is in the Tainted Love colorway. This is the Positively Squishy DK. So this is the first time I'm making an actual clothing sample out of my yarn, which is about time. So, and it's coming along very nicely. I'm alternating skeins, which I don't think I really needed to, which you can see a weird seam kind of in the back but I think it's gonna block out and if it doesn't it's right in the center so it kind of looks intentional uh, I did not alternate skeins for the sleeves and I don't think it's noticeable I really it's like I don't think it's noticeable at all so because I started a third skein on the sleeve so totally not noticeable which is good they were all dyed in the same pan but that doesn't mean anything with hand dyed yarn so but looking at the skeins, they all looked pretty similar. So I thought I was pretty confident it'd be okay. And that's all, no, that is not all. Oh shoot. I left, uh, I left my spinning bag downstairs, but I will come back next clip and show off my current spin that is on the spindle, but I will show what I finished. So I finished this one. This is the one you saw last week on the spindle. This one seemed really big. And the one I'm working on now seems really big. I don't know why. I didn't measure it. So that is that. I've not put up a poll about my Spinning, I have gotten some comments about wall hangings, door hangings. Everybody thinks that's kind of a cool idea. I always ask my husband the questions too, and he's like, I don't know, why don't you make a rug? I'm like, well, I don't want to ruin it because if I put it on the floor, it's going to be like all smushed bond. And then what else did he say? He said something about 
Oh, he said a blanket. I'm like, well, I don't think there's enough for a blanket and it's not the most soft. So blanket's kind of out. Someone mentioned weaving squares, which not a bad idea, but I kind of got my weaving project. I don't know if I want to do more weaving. But then someone mentioned a like embroidery hoop kind of weaving so you could do like a big circle weave which could be cool and then i thought maybe mandala i could make a bunch of mandalas so i got the embroidery hoops if i found some more yeah i don't know i don't know i want to use up all the yarn so that's the that's one of the keys i want to be able to use it all up i don't want there to be leftovers so something like maybe a mandala would be cool. Maybe a big, ma I don't know, like a huge mandala. I don't know, like keep going around and around and around until I'm out of yarn. I don't know. And then I'd have to find some sort of hoop, which apparently you can make your own hoop. If you buy like, there's like this flexible plumbing tube you can buy at like the uh, Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever and make your own custom size hoop because I was following a group on Facebook and she made her mandala and it was like bigger than the pattern and I had the same problem with them the ones I made on not my hoops they were all too big so I had to like cut out rows and adapt to fit the hoop but you know she had already finished it she didn't want to like rip it back so she found a way to make a hoop so I could do that and that could be really cool actually a big hoop but where would I put it like I could put it on my wall here like I have a pretty big wall but would that look really obnoxious how big would it be I don't know like I don't know. I don't know how far these will go. <laughs> so, but maybe, 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 maybe. And then, mm, I don't know. I'm, I have a hard time making decisions if you haven't noticed. But I got to keep thinking, keep thinking about what to do with a bunch of little mini, uh, minis. Because it makes kind of a big square. But then if I made the, if I made the bunting, like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Again, I want to find some, something that's going to like guarantee use it up. So like a blanket would definitely use it up because you, know, you just keep going until you're out and you keep going. A mandala, maybe, because you just keep going until you're out and then switch to the next color. But usually those look better when they're like each round is a different color. So then you'd have that center that's like tiny. I am brainstorming on air and maybe I need to do an Instagram live or something. I keep saying I need to do those, but they always like freak me out. So <laughs> I'm shy in person. So, so that's it. That's all I'm going to ramble about this afternoon. And uh, in other news. So this weekend, Emily had a cross country race. It was her first race of the season. She also had a robotics meet. So it was a super busy Saturday. So we got up early. We ran her over to robotics. She did robotics for an hour. We picked her up and we booked it over to the race. Uh, uh, robotics is usually like three hours, so she only got got to stay an hour. But so we feel a little bad about missing, but we're just trying so hard to balance both events. But we booked her over the race, and she did the race, and she did amazing. She did her best time ever. She did third place for her team, and she did 22nd place overall out of 150, roughly. So it was great. She got a little token. Uh, I'm just, we're so proud of her. We're always proud of her, but like it was super exciting that she actually came in the top group. She's running another race today. She's on the varsity team. So they run, sometimes they run varsity races, sometimes they don't, but the top eight to 10 girls run the varsity race. So she gets to do a varsity race today. And the same thing happened last year. And then she kind of settled into a time that wasn't, didn't qualify, but it was totally fine. So she's kind of following that same path, except she shaved off like a good 20 seconds off her personal best of last year. So, and that's with her not running at all, all summer. <laughs> so she's already telling me she wants to skip day camp next year, uh, next summer, and she wants to run. So, which is good, good for her. And I told her if she's serious about that, that I would consider it. So I will take her out. She can run and she can do that and then and practice her trumpet because I told her she needs to practice if she wants to run and practice her instrument for the summer if that's her summer activities then she doesn't have to go to day camp day camp this year seemed a little boring I I mean she had fun she made friends but they didn't really do much so, so I don't know uh and what else oh and then Sunday we went and did a paranormal paranormal ghost walk at Canterbury Village so Canterbury Village is a very old area it used to be a farm it was owned by scripts who apparently is 
the make uh, creator of WWJ Radio, or yeah, was it WWJ Radio, and Scripps Media, which was another like news program. Oh, the Detroit News, the Detroit News. So a very prominent family. There is a mansion called Scripps Mansion that's nearby that is now currently owned by a Catholic Church, and they do other things with that. So it's not related to the village and then the village is was converted from the farm into all these little shops and stuff but apparently there's lots of ghost sightings and all these spooky stories so we went for a walk through the village and a woman told us all these ghost stories and stuff it was really fun kids were pretty tired because it was kind of late on Sunday but we had I really enjoy that stuff so it was fun so we, we enjoyed that and then yeah I got a piano <laughs> so hopefully I'll Take a little video i'll try to take a little video of me playing something this week i'm not super confident in playing a lot so i know i've put in videos before but sometimes those videos take a lot of time because i'll record myself like 20 times until i get one that i'm comfortable with but i should i'll at least take i'll at least show you the piano so maybe i'll put in david playing because he played a little song for me so i recorded so maybe i'll put that one in instead um but that's it so it's going to be another busy week and we got lots of practices and races and meets and all sorts of things. So I will try to keep working on my sweater. I will try to keep figuring out what I'm doing with my other things. And man, I don't know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll cast on another actual knitted knocker. So that's all I got for now. I'll be back uh, later this week and uh, that's it. <laughs> See you later. Hey guys, it's, I'm back and I'm going to wrap it up with this clip this week. Not a whole lot, really. Uh, that, well, not a whole lot of crafting. There's been a lot of stuff going on. So, uh, do I, oh, and I still forgot my spinning bag. I didn't really work much on it, but I'm on like a purpley pink mini. So it's really not that exciting to share. So I'm not even going to worry about it. So I've got a couple of things to share instead. So I mentioned I was going to start a knitted version of a knitted knocker. And I did. And I also decided to stuff all the knockers because I just really wanted to see and make sure they looked okay when they were stuffed and that they were about the right size and they seemed they seemed good. So I'll show you the crochet ones that I stuffed. So these are the ones I did last week. These ones just took forever and I had a hard time with the hook and the yarn as I've said a million times already. But the, I just, I don't know what it was because usually crochet is totally quick and easy and you know, great, but I don't know, but they look good. They look good. So we have, these are size C's, um, nice and stuffed. So those look good. Again, this is Patton's Grace yarn in the champagne colorway. I'm just using regular fiber fill. So then I did a knitted, knitted version. Now these could maybe use a little more stuffing, but I let, again, I just kind of stuffed them to just visualize. So once they get to the company or whatever, whoever the volunteers, they can add more or whatever so I just, it's just a good start and makes it look, look a little more presentable uh, so this is a knitted one and this is a size B so this is a smaller so slightly slightly smaller I mean again my sizing may not be right the knitted is more stretchier so I don't know but again I'm, sti I'm sticking with the middle sizes because I figure they can go either way and so not only do I have one I have two so like quickly <laughs> like I made all the one in a whole day I like finished this one and did this one yesterday so so much easier and this is a and this actually so I made knitted knockers and awesome breast forms which are similar but different this before and you usually start at the top the nipple area and work your way around and then do the back and that's how you do the crochet ones this pattern is amazing it starts at the back because I don't like the increases as much because usually you see these increases and on the front and they're a little more gappy than the decreases I mean, I'm sh I, maybe it was different. I don't know. For some reason, I just never liked how they turned out. So I really like, and I loved how this worked up. It just was so simple. You cast on your 15 stitches to start, and then you just work your way out, and then you work your way back, and you bind it off. It was It's like so easy and so mindless, and the pattern is easy to remember. So the crochet one was like, I have a hard time reading my crochet as much as knitting. I can read the stitches. Like I know my stitches. Like if I can look at my needle, it's like, oh, okay, that was that row. I could kind of figure that out. Crochet, I can if it's like double crochet or 
basic, but the single crochets are so tiny. Like I can't tell where I did the increases. Like by just looking at it, it's like really hard for me to visualize it. So it's like, I would forget, okay, was this the row I was supposed to do double increases on or was this the regular row, the single increase row? And, cause, and they kept alternating. This one, it's literally the same row over and over again until the, until the end. So it's like so easy. So yeah, I have two of those done. So I'm very excited. This is for the Reluctant Sisters, Reluctant Knitter, Save the Tatas Make Along that she's doing on her channel. It goes until the end of the month, so uh, a few more days to make anything that's breast cancer awareness related. And then you can, you know, if it's for friend or family or donations, whatever, and then you could gift it to give it in October. That was kind of her plan. So, and if you make knockers, that's a bonus and you can win the prize and she's got cool prizes including a bag from happy little yarn and i'm super duper hoping to win because it's a pumpkin spice bag so it's super cute so so i got a third one on oh yeah and so the two c's that i made with crochet totally ate up that whole skein 50 grand skein i got two b's and now i'm starting a third c i think i just made it to the increases for the c size and I'm gonna do start the back and then I'm gonna make it party in the back as they call it with the pink so you have the neutral front and then you have a little pop of color in the back so I'll show you what that looks like when it's done so that is my plan so I'm gonna work on and yeah I like I like probably could have found a project to do something because I had two skeins of the pink two skeins of the purple two skeins, two skeins of the champagne like could have put it all together for one kind of project and I did think about that but I don't really love working with 50 gram skeins like I did with the dollar store yarn too which I'm gonna probably make another top because I bought enough of that pink color dusty pink to make a full top I might make the same summer valley top again because I really like it um but I just so many ends to tie off and weave and whatever so it's not my favorite if I'm gonna do something I'd rather like I really want to get like I wish they sold bigger skeins of, co of cotton. Like even the Pima cotton. Uh, maybe those are bigger. Those might be bigger. So I don't know. So that's my rant. But I'm going to work on these some more because they're just so easy to travel with. They're so easy car knitting, easy piano knitting, cross country, whatever, wherever I am. It's just such an easy, simple project. So I'm going to make some more of those. I'll stuff them since I have like 20 billion pounds of stuffing in my closet. So I'll use up some of that. So, in other news, I didn't work on my sweater. I didn't work on anything else. That's all I've been working on. But I've been really busy. There's just been things going on. So yesterday, we had a nice little, I you can call it a ceremony, but it was more of just, it was a ceremony. I guess it was a witnessing of putting my grandmother's ashes into the wall uh, at the National Cemetery she's at. So that's where my grandfather's buried. It's a military cemetery. And so, He's got this little plaque and his ashes are in like a wall. And so, you know, when grandma passed away, we, that was the plan was she's going to be put there too. So no one ever, we really never had a service or anything just because it, it just didn't, didn't really work out. And no one was really, I mean, it's, I know it's hard to say, hate to say it, but like all her like friends and stuff were, have all passed away already. So she, it wouldn't have been a big crowd. It would have been the family. And we all just celebrated her for her birthday, like, you know, the month before. So everyone was pretty much agree in agreement that we would just not really do anything. So, but then they did uh, realize they could actually, the ceremony or the cemetery would actually escort us to her site, open the plaque, put her ashes in, close it, and we could have witnessed. So, you know, make sure she's there, <laughs> which they, uh, they do a really good job. Uh, so we all got to do that. So it was pretty much it was it was just me as a grandchild representing all the grandchildren, I guess, and then it was all the children. So my dad, his siblings, uh, and then we had a nice lunch after. So that was nice. And then my aunt had a bag of things she to give me that she found in grandma's uh, condo. So just a handful of random things, but got a couple more Polish mugs. So we all liked the Polish like the Polish pottery. So well, it looks like she used this one too. So. Um, so yeah, so I love my little Polish mugs. Oh, oh, oh yeah, someone give, gave this to her. It says mama on it. How cute. Just notice that. Oh, they're very sweet. So I bet you Dale got that for her. Maybe Paul. Uh, and then, yeah, another one. So, some pretty flowers on it. So that's sweet. 
And then, I love this, so my grandma really liked pins and brooches and stuff, especially like holiday ones, but I don't know if I've ever seen this one, but it's perfect. So it's a bunch of cats, a little wiggly tail, so that was super cute, so I might have to put that on my coat this winter. And then I, and then this thing, she needs some, she needs some TLC, she's very dusty, but it was like this Christmas kitten holding a ball of yarn and a little stocking, so I've never seen this before either, but obviously it was in her house. She liked cats too, so. Her hat's a bit dusty, so I need to clean her up a bit, but that was cute, so put that out for Christmas. And then, I'm ready for this, she apparently had my senior picture, one of my senior pictures from high school. So there's me as a 17 year old without my glasses on. So David walked in, he's like, who's that? I'm like, who do you think it is? He's like, is that you? I said, yep. So that was, uh, Summer of 1998, seven, 1997, 1997, yeah. So that was kind of funny. So I got just some mementos, which is always nice. Um, and then lastly, we went to the library. So I, I last May, I, I told I got some books from the library. They have a library sale where they sell books for super cheap, like it's a to generate money for the library. Uh, and then. After that sale, Jim had bought a nice reusable tote bag, and it's basic, it was $15, and it said, next library sale, you can come in and you can fill that tote bag for $15, or for free. So you paid $15 for the bag, so you can come to the library sale and fill the bag for $15. Well, then they had another library sale, and then we missed it, or, you know, we kind of missed, or... We had that bag, that's right, so we had the bag prior to the sale. We went to the sale, but we didn't know how that worked, so we showed up on like the last day, which was fill a bag day, which we thought was that, but no, that was you could go fill a bag for $5. So then we ended up filling the bag for $5. So, so that would have been a waste to use our $15 bag at the end of the sale, at the $5 bag sale. Um, sorry, that probably made no sense. Anyways, we went and filled a bag for $15 <laughs> the other day, and so I got the... This is a, I mean, like, this is a $20 book, and it's practically new. Uh, Clara Falk and Camilla Savaland, Pretty Knitted Hands. So it's a bunch of fingerless mitt patterns. Super pretty. Lots of cabling. Oh, but, oh, there's one in here with head cats on it, I think. Where was it? Oh, but yeah, this, well, lots of color work, so, like, really pretty color work there. Um, let's see. Where was the cats one? Oh, here it is. Cats and yarn. So I totally have to do that. I have to make like black and orange cat. Maybe one mitt black, one mitt orange would be cute. So they could be black and orange kitties. Uh, what kind of yarn does that use? I really don't like it when they don't tell you the yarn size. They tell you what yarn you used, but it doesn't say what type of yarn it is. It says yarn, Ram, Ra, Ruma Thurgarn, 100% wool. Like, what is that? It's a, using size two needles, so I'm guessing it's fingering weight. So, I'll research that bit, called Esther. Uh, let's see, they got lots of color work, and then the, the, they're uh, sectioned by seasons. So those are all the winter mittens. And then, oh, this one's really pretty too. Oh, maybe I'll start sprucing up on my color work here. But then they, they these are like the summery or the fall mittens. We got lots of cabled mittens. These are cute little stripies. Uh, these are really pretty. So these are like lace probably. Let's see. Garn Japer Silk Fino. But 656 yards to 100 grams, that's lace weight. And they look like lace weight. I don't have lace. I have purple lace weight yarn. I have purple mitts. Why those look like me pretty. Huh, I don't know. So, I don't know. They, it was, you know, it was like fill a bag for free. So, I just picked up the ones that looked interesting. Knitting pretty. Simple instructions for 30 fabulous projects. So, these were all just real basic. Uh, let's see. What was, I didn't even. I just, I, I need a book that looked relatively new. And, like, they have a bookmark. Plain old scarf, uh, ribbed scarf. So I mean, real basic, but you know. Oh, they had this. Oh yeah, they had a basic sweater in the back. I like basic sweaters because then you can kind of adapt them. A poncho, droopy curtain. What's that? 
Okay, they don't have, what is there a picture? Is there no picture of it? There's no, there's no picture. Okay, that's weird. Groovy curtain, like other, I don't believe in curtains. Uh, knit. Okay, that uses a slub yarn. I'm really confused why this doesn't have a picture. How would you not have a picture of everything in here? Oh my gosh. Okay, sorry, I'm getting off on a tangent again, but there's gotta be a picture of this somewhere, right? I wanna see this groovy curtain. I'm so confused. Oh, and then it's got this cute, oh, I'm totally making this. I saw that right away. Little tank top, cute, 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 cute. Um, what is it? Four skeins of a cotton acrylic blend, worsted. Okay, totally. Oh, maybe I can use the pink yarn for that. Hmm. Just hold it double, because it's kind of a, like a lighter weight cotton. Anyways, again, I'm off on a tangent. Knitting pretty. It's weird. I don't know. And that last one I got, which was a $30 book, an interweave book, $27.99, Wool Studio. So this looks all fancy. The Knitwear Capsule Collection. So yeah, oh yeah, that's really pretty. So this one's like couture knitting stuff. A sweater, lots of sweaters, pretty much sweaters. Ooh, this one's interesting. Oh, that one's really interesting. A weird kind of neckline there. So, um, so yeah, this one's more modern knitting, I guess. That one's weird, but. That's pretty, it's like a cowl. So those are my books. Um, is that it? I think that's it. So on to the weekend, uh, we're just gonna do our thing and I'm gonna do my thing and I hope all you all get to do your thing. <laughs> I feel like there's something I'm forgetting. I'm always, I'm always feel like I'm forgetting something. I'm gonna remember it later. I, besides my spinning, I think that's, it. I will put a clip of David playing the piano at the end of this. I'm not putting the clip of me because I still don't like it. So I will promise, I promise, I will put in a clip of me playing piano next week. So, but you haven't heard David play, so you can hear a little clip of David playing our new piano. So with that, I hope everyone has a great weekend and you get to craft all the things. Bye. <laughs>